Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and I'm going to be talking about something that I think is really um, kind of cool, and that's going to be all the Power Ranger fan films that have been, you know, either in the works, or have come out, or are going to come out very soon. Um, and yeah, so let's get started. Um, so last night I was, you know, I'd heard about some of these fan films, I've actually been watching some of the, and listening, and hearing about some of this uh, new fan film um, called Zordon of Eltar, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later. But um, last night I was sort of just, I heard about a trailer that came out for it. So I was scrolling down through it, and I saw the trailer, and I really liked it. Like I said, talk about it later. Um, but I saw, I also what popped up was this 26-minute uh, fan film short. I guess it really wasn't a short, but like a fan film. 26 minutes, and it was called Teenagers with Attitude, and it was a reimagined version of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers before they become the Power Rangers, and, um, like, they had the same character names and pretty much the same, like, character status and everything, um, but, like, different variations of these characters we all know and love from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and they, you know, mentioned Terra Venture, and changed some backstory, like they made Jason's parents, um, you know, astronauts, um, but it was really cool to see. And th this film, Teenagers with Attitude, Teenagers with Attitude consists in the same universe as Zordon of Eltar. Um, at the very end of the film, we see the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, before they become Power Rangers, they're trying to get out of the school because there's some sort of earthquake, and the earthquakes Rita repulses new monsters, and yeah, um, but they're trying to get out of their school because they're in detention, and we see them get teleported to Zordon's lair, and Zordon's, like, place, the command center, um, it's, like, in space, so you can see the outside of, you, you could see the whole world from his... You know, there's like a window, and that's cool. And then, um, the rangers go back down to Earth, and obviously they've got the power to become Power Rangers. And they see Rita Repulsa's monster, and we see Rita Repulsa with Goldar and Scorpia, I think. Scorpia's tight, I forget her name, but, um, definitely Goldar. And it's a very cool version of Goldar, and also Rita Repulsa. Um, but... They're, they, they're about to morph, and they get their morph stance, and that's how the film ends. I thought that was so cool. I would really, really like to see a another some more of this. Obviously, they can't do much because they don't own the property to Saban, and Saban probably doesn't approve of this or whatever. And I know the film is dedicated to, to Saban, but I would like to see another you know 26-minute thing. Um, maybe I'm not really sure what else they could do with this, but... Maybe we could see them morph or something like this. I don't know, but I really, really did enjoy it a lot. A lot more than I thought I did. I thought they only had a $500, um, you know, that's all the money they had for production and everything. And I, feel, I thought that the filming was great. It didn't look homemade. It looked pretty realistic, like a real movie. Um, acting was pretty good. You know, Red Ranger's acting, I thought maybe could have been slightly, you know, a little less robotic-like, but... I, it was still good. Um, it was very enjoyable, very enjoyable, um, and something I, I like. I said I like to see more of. Um, now, quickly, I'm going to talk about something that I really don't want to talk about it too much because it's a little bit of a disappointment. But um, since the beginning of last year, I think maybe summer of last year, there's been all this hype because these this you know team was coming together to make a. You know, Power Rangers fan film called MMPR, um, which obviously Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, we saw some really cool trailers. Obviously, a different variation, not in the same universe. Um, it was like sort of like there was a scientist and the general and army who were creating the Morphers, and the team leader seemed like it was the Blue Ranger who was a girl. And they were changing it up, and I had high hopes for this. And, um, you know, recently we've just been getting mixed messages from them. They're saying we've got real lives, and I, I completely understand this. Production's been stopped, the bond doesn't approve of the film, 
the you know the release dates coming out. You know, hate moving the release date back. It's only going to be one episode now. It's going to be two episodes now. It's going to be a whole movie. It's going to be not a whole movie. It's going to be a half hour. It's been like these these little things here and there. And I was had very had very high hopes for this. I thought it was very cool to see another reimagined version of you know the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the guys who started it all, and a very cool different version of this. Now, even though I love teenagers with attitude, it still was pretty much only. Almost the same story, consisting the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Almost. It was the same, like, base of a story. Characters were different. The way they came together was very different. Um, it seemed like the whole world itself was different. Um, but it was, like, the same base storyline. You know, five teenagers get the, or, um, teleported by Zordon. They get powers, you know, the power coins and the morphers. And they're, they go back down to Earth, and they're able to fight... Um, you know, as power, you know, morph and have zords and they can fight these big monsters and they have to fight Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed or whatever. And that, that, that's what it is. And, um, yeah, so it was pretty much the same story, but a very different reimagined way of that story. MMPR was a completely different story in total, completely. Um, Jason David Frank said he didn't really love the idea of the MMPR film, but they got some, like, I don't know what their budget was, but they got a lot of, you know, pretty big Power Ranger actors in general. I think they got, um, they got, uh, might have been David Fielding. He played Zordon in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and all other seasons. They got the actor who uh, did the voice for Lord Zed. So, I mean, like, they had a lot, and Lord Zed was going to be the villain. It was a very cool storyline. Um, but if we're getting mixed messages like this from them, I am not too happy about that. So I'd like to see, um, I lo lo I'm hoping that's going to eventually come out sometime soon. They'll get a re release date, and hopefully it will be good. So that's all I really got to say about that. Um, now we're going to look at pretty much my main focus here in this video or what was supposed to be my main focus, and that was uh, Zordon of Eltar. Um, I'm going to put the trailer in here. Uh, I, think it, I might have already done it. Sorry, guys. I, I previously recorded this before it's actually posted on the internet, so I'm not exactly sure if I'll end up putting the trailer in or not. So if I, I think I will, so it'll be at the beginning of the... You know what? No. No, it's not going to be the beginning. I'm sorry. I'm... I'll be at the end of this, the, this video. You can watch the Zordon of Eltar trailer. See, I'm just trying to figure this out right now. Um, but Zordon of Eltar looks great. And I'm not saying it looks great because, you know, we're seeing a backstory of Zordon. No, we're not just seeing a backstory of Zordon. We're seeing reimagined a reimagined version of Zordon. A reimagined version of Rita Repulsa. Eltar. We're seeing Eltar. We're seeing... Background in the Machine Empire. Where did those guys come from? They just popped up in Zeo, you know? Machine Empire, what the hell? Here we here we are with some, you know, a real background and storyline. And I'm proud, out of the three movies, or fan films, Teenagers with Attitude, MMPR, and Zordon of Eltar, Zordon of Eltar is number one. Because it is just such a cool concept. I mean, these people who are putting on this fan film and production, who's directing and actors, they're, they're you got to think, you know, they're obviously Power Rangers fans, but you got to think, why did Rita Repulsa, why was she a villain? Was she always a villain? Did she become a villain? Was she young ones? Was she old? Was she always old? I mean, if you remember in um, Power Rangers in Space, we saw uh, Rita Repulsa, Lord Zed, uh, Diva Tox. You know, and also, uh, obviously, uh, Astronema become Corone, but that was because Zordon's, you know, good energy was able to uh, put them, they, you know, besides Corone, I mean, some of the monsters turned to sand, but, like, the main villains, the Divatox, um, you know, uh, Divatox, Rita Repulsa, Lord Zed, they became human, or something like human, and they weren't evil anymore. And I don't know what she, I don't really know what that means. Um, yeah. Wait, sorry guys. I just thought about this right now. Um, quickly, I just want to 
say one quick thing about Teenagers with Attitude. I know this is really kind of off topic. I just thought about this right now. Um, Teenagers with Attitude, they're in Angel Grove, but there was this meeting with the principal and the Yellow Ranger, and he said that the Yellow Ranger transferred from Reefside High School. Now, for those of you who don't, to, to Angel Grove High School or whatever. So for those of you who don't know what Reefside is, that's the school that Tommy Oliver taught at and the Power Rangers Dino Thunder went to. So I thought that was a very, very cool way um, to introduce, like, that there's a bigger universe out here, that Dino Thunder, you know, obviously it exists, but, like, maybe they could do other ones than just Teenagers, teenagers with Attitude. Maybe they could do... Some other ones. Also, we got to see Catherine, who becomes the pink uh, Mighty Morphin Ranger at the end. Uh, pink Zeo and Pink Turbo for some period of time. So, yeah. Um, sorry, guys. That was just quick. Um, I forgot what I was saying about Zora Noveltar, but um, I just think it's a very, very nice concept. Very cool. And I'm very excited to see this. Now, from the trailer, th there's a planet. An alien planet. Zora Noveltar. Um, the trailer... I'm going to say, compared to some other trailers that I've seen, for like, let's let's take a, a regular movie that's coming out that's not a fan film. Compare it to this trailer, the quality of the trailer, which means the quality of the film, is very, very good. Like I said, with Teenagers with, teenagers with Attitude. This is not something that was just filmed with an iPhone. This was something that was filmed with real high-end cameras or something like that. Or if, if it was filmed with cheaper cameras, then some, they did a really good job of making it look professional. Because it looks very professional. So, um, you know, kudos to them for that. I think that's a very big accomplishment for a fan film. Um, besides that, we get an actual human representation, not human, but like Eltarian representation of Zordon. Um, this is when he's like, he can walk, and he's not just this floating head. Now we've seen in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie... In 1995 or 1996, whenever that came out, I forget. Um, we saw Zordon was, like, old and wrinkly, but he was, like, laying down. So we know he had some sort of human body. Um, a big thing, what I think is that Zordon didn't always look like that. He had this hood and he had this silver mask. and it was, It's a very cool representation. Um, one big point I want to bring out to you, which I th bring up to you guys is, well, two things. One, about this movie. Rita Repulsa was not always a villain, and, um, but she always had this green dragon sword thing, the whole green ranger power. Now, look at Tommy, okay? Look at Tommy's power coin from green, the green ranger. It has, like, the green ranger, like, foot or something like that. It looks sort of like a raptor foot. And, you know, it's his Green Ranger logo. It's on his power coin. He, there, that Green Ranger logo is tattooed onto Rita Repulsa's face. Okay? And she's in, like, this dark green, black color. She can, she controls the Dragon Zord. With the Dragon Dagger. She is in possession. She, it's not like she's in possession. She has the Green Dragon Dagger. It's hers. And she controls the Green Dragon Zord. What does that mean? What does this mean? Well, now you gotta think hard. Rita Repulsa, well, she is, you know, she gives Tommy his green, dark green ranger powers. She had something planned. Maybe she wasn't capable of holding the green ranger power anymore. You know, maybe she needed to pass it on to some other, but somebody else. I'm not sure. Here's the other big thing. Zordon is that at the head of Tommy's White Ranger, the White Ranger, like, Power Coin Tiger logo, that's Zordon's representation. And I'm sure Zordon controls Saba. Sabo, whatever you want to call it. So I call it Saba. Saba, okay? That right there would make an outstanding movie. Even without the backstory, of Rita Repulsa on Zordon. We're seeing the origin of Tommy's power. We're seeing the origin of that, the power coins. We are seeing that. And to me, that's the best thing of all. 
I don't think they could have. They that that's the smartest move, the smartest thing, the coolest thing I think ever, and that's part of the reason why I'm so excited for this. Also, in the trailer, we got to see why Rita, you know, says make my monster grow. You know, when she when the range the monsters grow. Um, I wonder if in this movie we'll see how other villains in Power Ranger seasons like take Wild Force or L Lothor or Mezagog, how they got the idea to make the monsters grow. You know, maybe they Rita gave, maybe Rita created all these villains. I don't know. I am so looking forward to seeing this. There is so much they can do um, with this. Zordon looks great. Zoria Zordon's supposed to be the warrior. I wonder if we'll see how Zordon becomes like a floating head. I'm sure he'll end up sending him away, her away into the dumpster or whatever. Um, but here's something I'd really like to see. And if they did this, this would be epic. Go back, go, let's go back seven years, or I guess now eight, to Operation Overdrive in Sentinel Knight. Sentinel Knight sent Thrax into a dumpster just like Rita. Thrax is Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa's son. He was the ultimate villain in one, the Once a Ranger special episode in Operation Overdrive. Okay? Sentinel Knight sent him away. Around the same, I'm sure that's got to be around the same time as Rita was, you know, fighting the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I would love to see people like Sentinel Knight pop up and defeat somebody. Or some hints from the Magna Defender. Or, I, I don't even know, but there's so much they can do when they do a fan film like this. And I, I am so, so excited to see this. So, um, that's, I don't know, I'm pretty much going to end this here. Um... I don't know. There's only really one other thing I'd like to see, and that'd be some background on the Alien Rangers. You know, how they get their power. I'd like to almost see Alien. The Alien Ranger season it was good, but it was just like the Alien Rangers already had the power. They came down to Earth, and they started fighting for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when they returned to kids. Okay, fine. Why though? What? Why? How? How? How did they get their power? How did, who gave them their power? Was it Zordon? How about Gosei? Are we going to see some hints of Gosei with Zordon mentoring Gosei? Maybe Gosei's going to fight alongside Zordon in, a, in a, like a body form. I'm not sure. But we'll find out in 2015. Oh, I guess this year. Sorry, I feel like I'm still in 2014. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to click, share, like, subscribe. We are so close to 100 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough. It has really been picking up subscribers and viewers, and I seriously, I am so thankful to you guys, and this just makes me want to keep making more and more videos, so I thank you guys so much, um, and yeah, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe, because, you know, you could always win raffles, we do them periodically, we just raffled off the Dino Charge Deluxe Morpher, um, and we do mashups, like we just posted two mashups, um, which actually, um, Flyer did those, he made the mashups with help from Knox. So that wasn't even me, that was Flyer and Knox. So that, that was really great. Um, but that's pretty much about it. Make sure you check out some of our new videos um, and have a great 2015. I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude and keep writing guys, bye.